If we are not careful, very shortly we will lose this freedom. The shifting international system has generated renewed strategic interests. In the corner of the world, we regard our home. Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands. I was concerned with the report about the Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands. A lot of powerful people have been talking about us. Right now, we've opened an embassy in the Solomon Islands. Our islands lie in the strategically important Pacific. Superpowers and their allies are competing for our allegiance. But we are much more than just a pawn in a geopolitical game. We are a people, three quarters of a million strong, with our own hopes, dreams and needs. And we're about to elect a new government. Our freedom of choices, our voices are very important. Everyone's hyped up about this election. You want to sit here? Prime Minister Manasse Songavare wants to become the first PM to serve consecutive terms, championing his controversial pivot to China. Because we registered this country now on map because of powerful decisions, important decisions that you're making, we become relevant. But his opponents say the country has lost its way. We have a government that is numb to the cries of the people. In mid-April, 13 parties will contest all 50 seats in the national parliament. MPs will then vie to form a majority coalition and elect a prime minister. Hello, hello you. I'm Chrissy, and this is my country and my home. So join me as I take you behind the headlines to find out what's really at stake in this election, what issues matter the most to the people, and what Solomon Islanders want from their leaders. Solomon Islands, capital of Honiara, is home to nearly 90,000 people. It's the country's biggest city, and people from the provinces flock here to live and work. Welcome to the 2023 Pacific Games and to our home. The city has just finished hosting the Pacific Games, lauded as a major success for Prime Minister Manasi Songavare and his government. But once the cheers faded and the stadium's empty, the same problems facing everyday people persist. Roads and some sport facilities, no, so me looking him a little bit developed. Any other thing, me not, me not sure. About. I struggle too. So I'm following me for fine hard for like school fee. Like if you go to the hospital with me, you'd people patient with me, sleep low, floor no more, and even medicine, me run out of medicine. Speaking to locals, health is raised as an election issue more than anything else. To see the challenges firsthand, I'm visiting Solomon Island's only ambulance service, St. John's. Good, thank you. Paramedic Launceston, known as Tura, has agreed to show me what his day looks like. We provide um, more like a pre-hospital care, especially within transportation. What we do is like try to treat or stabilize patients inside the ambulance. Before long, there's a call out. What's going on now? We have a call from a diabetic uh, patient. Right now, he's in a critical home situation. What about in terms of you know, patient care and having traffic and bad roads? There's also not contribute as well. Even though we slow down, it's going to be um, very painful for the patient also. It's off the road. Still, this patient is one of the lucky few. You've been admitted what hospital or? No, I'm St. John's doesn't yet have the resources to service far beyond Honiara. What do you think about the service so far um, in terms of just getting here and taking you down to the hospital? Very important for me because uh, I don't know what's happening in my body. 
are you confident you know in the health system of our country yeah 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 hundred percent As we arrive at Solomon Island's largest health facility, the National Referral Hospital, it's clear not everyone agrees. They have no garden space, so from Sunday to same now, we are still outside. Outside. So, M3 days now? M3 days, yes. No any bed, no bed. If I just lay my other mat, I fall on my mat, I just Another woman, Maria, is waiting for medicine to alleviate her son Manasseh's chronic stomach problems. It's been a struggle because I'll be absent from work, just staying here. In terms of health, this is what we get and it's really sad because maybe for those with money, they could um, afford to go to um, hospitals overseas. Meanwhile, for majority of us, we're, we're stuck here. People should choose their um, leaders, the next um, <coughs> members wisely. Because like, even if we choose the same people, like, we don't see any differences. <laughs> like... <coughs> hey. Hello. 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 Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. you. How's your day been? Uh, it's been good. Dr. Janella Solomon is the hospital's okay. superintendent. What are your hopes, you know, as a leader for the National Referral Hospital? For a government that could, that would really recognise the, the hard work of our health workers. Hello. So this is our blood bank. It's stressful for our staff, especially when you're standing in front of a patient who's dying. You know what to give, but you don't have it. We would really want to see a hospital being built in a short time like the Pacific Games sports facilities. We have issues to space and with the facility itself, it's, it's like an old lady on a, on a resuscitation machine which is struggling to survive and we deserve to have a better place to work in and not to wait for a very long time for the medicines. What has the ministry done about this? Um, given that, you know, every, every yeah. year we just see a drug shortage, drug shortage. Yeah. One of the reasons would be outstanding payments. Uh, we have major suppliers that have withdrew from supplying um, the country. We still have the debts. Who funds all the drugs? It's the government. The population has been increasing, but the budget has been dropping if we could have um, our outstanding debts being paid. Uh, I'm certain that patients will be seeing that medicines are being available all the time. We're going to the airport to meet Peter Kenny Lore Jr., who is the United Party wing leader and also the son of Solomon Allen's first prime minister, Peter Kenny Lore Sr. He's probably the person in the best position to challenge Manasseh Sogabari in these elections. So we're just driving into the airport now. Okay. okay. <laughs> that pothole though. Hello. We are actually rolling, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, How are you? Thank you. How do you see your chances of forming the next government in these um, upcoming elections? We look to do better than we did. Uh, in the last elections. Let us not let politics divide us. United Party is not about politics of division. The same uh, feeling is there, uh, that people are looking for um, some change. One of the issues is what I call a leadership deficiency syndrome. Uh, five years of a Sogavari-led government, how do you see his leadership over the five years? I think Sogavari has the interest of the country at hand in terms of the decision that he has made. But I think there's also uh, a realization that some of these decisions are perhaps not in the best interest. The priorities perhaps are not the priorities that the nation is screaming for. I think there was very much focus on the games. I would argue more important priorities, health and education uh, being, being there and of course um, uh, unemployment. But as I always say, Solomon Islands' development will always fall on the shoulders of Solomon Islanders. 
and it's not Taiwan, it's not China that will develop Solomon Islands. It's not the US, it's not Australia, it's, um, it's us ourselves. Is there any step-by-step -step, um, plan that you have to, to address or tackle corruption? I think it's important that we continue to keep uh, people aware of the corrupt practices during elections and bribery is definitely one of them. We will be investing the offices that need to be funded. There will need to be some reforms to give them more bite. Uh, you know, we would, like, we would like these offices to bite us. Prime Minister Sogavari, he has been notoriously unwilling to speak to the media and be transparent about how the decisions are being made. Do you have concerns about where this could lead for Solomon Islands? Yeah, I think I, think I have deep concerns about that. Uh, of course, we know authoritarian countries don't want to do this. Uh, and uh, they don't want to um, front up to the press and they don't feel that they need to explain themselves. Well, it was great to talk. We will see you again. Yes, and, uh, thank, thank you very you much for, for this opportunity and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Bye -bye. Thank you. We've asked to speak to Prime Minister Manasi Songavari a number of times without success. I'm heading to Malaita, my home province. Many of the Prime Minister's key opponents hail from this island. The whole thing is about the leader of the opposition and who else on the other side of the house wanting to be Prime Minister. That's what it is! Songavari is a combative leader and looms large over Solomon Islands politics. He's been PM four times and he's sometimes had a fraught relationship with Australia. Taiwan has accused China of using dollar diplomacy after the Solomon Islands switched allegiance to China. Songavari also led the push to switch diplomatic ties from Taiwan to China in 2019. Riots later engulfed Honiara in 2021, blamed partly on the China pivot. A contentious security pact with China followed in 2022. See while many have welcomed China's development assistance, others worry about Beijing's growing influence. Songavari's opponents say China is fueling corruption, illegal logging and undermining press freedom. In the last five years, Solomon Islands' human development ranking has gone backwards. The rate of logging has accelerated unsustainably, unemployment is high, and all the while, the population is growing rapidly. So the country's next leader faces huge challenges. And one of the PM's fiercest critiques, leader of the main opposition bloc, Matthew Wale, says the election is a referendum on Manasi Songavare. Yeah, he's a con man. He has been, you know, a very deceptive prime minister, very deceptive leader. Is, you know, it's been government by deception, and it has to come to a stop. And the people, only the people, can stop it. He wants education, health, and transparency to be prioritized. But doing it is harder than promising it. We're proposing free education. Where will you be getting the money from? Oh, we will have to wait till June revised budget to see. It. Uh, we are going to, of course, bring in more medicines to raise the stock levels to beyond 100% to make sure there's medication available at all times. There are too many preventable deaths that are totally unnecessary, but because he's numb, you know, to the struggles of the people, he doesn't care. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Okay. We've left Aoki and are heading up into the highlands to visit a small village called Busurata. Look at how bumpy it is. Many people here feel forgotten by the government. China, geopolitics and even the Pacific Games feel a long way from the realities of rural life. The people here have learned to get by without much help. David Sony. David Sony. David Sony. Ah, nice for meeting you. Yeah, every day now, I work in the garden. It's important for him planting taro because same culture blow me for that. All in the garden pastel, yeah? I meet him too, or the need blow me for that. The main uh, challenge where I face him, 
especially lo hiya lo bootsno and transport because sometimes mi fala ready mo ka ta market go go finish but wait for truck go go sometimes truck no come no other things ba no good no David is taking us to meet Lionel Mailiu, a familiar face in these parts. Lionel is teaching the next generation how to support themselves off the land. Rivers, yeah, our ecosystems we have right here. Livestock, really here. Right, free firewood, free water. If we work, utilize it, we'll get more richer. Why is it important for that knowledge to be transferred to other uh, younger people? They don't know how to look after the land, but if we don't do it now, sorry, we'll have a problem. But worse and worse and worse, then we come to the poverty. But now, climate is changing, so food will be changing too, and people will be hungry. So I learned that, so we have to bring it back, that knowledge for today, to teach to our, our young people. We have to adapt to look after our motherland. And do you see the government helping in terms of, you know, helping farmers or assisting in agricultural projects that would benefit farmers like yourself here? The government, yeah, they talked about, but nothing reaches that in the rural area. We, we, we did this, we work this by ourselves. The government is need, the needed is to, to look at this, to do training, more training, yeah. When in rural areas, they chop all the logs down and the soil is already erosion. I think that our primates should look on the land. In rural areas, some people know they don't know how to write, they don't know how to read. Yeah. So they want to do things for themselves, but teach them how to do it. If you just sit and quiet, sit, just close your arms, things will not happen. Yeah. We have to work hard before we see. Yeah, we, we have to self reliance Closing in on like almost two hours trying to follow the former premier of Malaita province, Daniel Suidani. But I've never been so anxious in my life driving through these roads. I've given all my focus and literally sweating even though the aircon is on, but it's just crazy getting here um, to this constituency. So that is talking. Our job is we are called representative. We represent our people in the communities. Kware village locals braved the heavy rain to hear from Suidani and his U4C party candidate Philip Fred Ramoli. Many are urging people to vote on issues and not be swayed by bribes. No stand for money. No stand for bag rice, no stand for packet sugar. Now get sugar meal no more a little bit time. Sugar him come sweet no more a little bit time. They no get a forget him you for the last four years. Last year, Suidani was removed from the provincial government following a vote of no confidence for his long-standing anti-China, pro-Taiwan stance, resulting in protests and further accusations of Chinese interference. What do you think about China's influence in the country? So many times when I, mean, oh, I was the premier at the time, uh, I've met uh, many business Chinese people who came trying to, to influence my office to give them permission to operate in, in the province. I didn't agree with that and I didn't take their money. So I've seen a lot of a lot of influences from China. We can hear straight from the caretaker prime minister all the things about China, and he's uh, very, very strong about the, the China issue. So I see that the Chinese uh, Communist Party is behind the GCJ government. On behalf of the young boys, we declare that we fall behind him. You will for change. For Suidani, he wants to see a more transparent government and it's important to him that Solomon Islanders understand what they're voting for. Most or 80% of our people live in the communities uh, do not really understand how government operates. 
uh, within the system. So it would be more good for leaders to come down and talk about governance to people before, uh, so that people can really understand if they say something not, not, not right, that people can stand up and maybe respond to it straight away. Democracy, in my view, is not something that we should take it for granted. What's the Solomon Islands you envision in the years to come? Today, Solomon Island uh, didn't have the, the speech, the freedom of speech in the country. Uh, even these newspapers uh, are not neutral. So, in my view, uh, in some years to come, Solomon Islands will be like other countries in the world that really enjoy freedom, liberty, and the, the children and the children of the children will enjoy the country that they live in. So that's my dream and my hope that one day Solomon Island will become one of the countries that enjoys uh, the environment, the resources, and everything they have in their country. who embody that dream are Reggie and Jojo Lepping. Both are outspoken about democracy, governance and women's issues in Solomon Islands. They're taking a break from their award-winning work in advocacy, media and professional sport to reconnect with their roots. Our island home. To the mangalo. Cut, cut, cut. First, we are off to Aoki Island, an artificial island built generations ago. The families have lived here for quite a long time, so sometimes being that resilient, the leaders turn a blind eye to it because they see like, oh, they survived everything. Um, they don't need um, our help in this. You've both been quite, you know, outspoken about corruption. And I just wanted to ask, you know, is this a big issue in this country? Corruption is a big issue. There's allocated money for development in certain areas, most areas, and then there's nothing that people can actually see that money is not really going to where it's supposed to go. So I have a friend in um, Honiara, and he was very vocal. He's like an anti-corruption advocate. And just recently, you know, uh, I've met with him, and he was like, you know, if anyone just, if any of the members uh, wanted to pay my vote, I'm just gonna vote for him. And I was like, why? He said, because there's just so many cor level of corruption that even my advocacy is not working. The next day, the twins wanted me to meet another auntie, Anne. But first, we had to find her in true Solomon style. Playing field, She said that we have to look for a slab. It's a, like a low house, which is like super helpful, right? Because there's like 500 other low houses. <laughs> I said, come down and face ten on your left. Oh my gosh, you had one was like, job. Face ten on a bridge. <laughs> As we sat down to some traditional core, I asked about the lack of women in Solomon Islands politics. And with the national parliament mm. as well, there are lesser women contesting this year than the previous one. How does that make you feel, Jojo? We're taking three steps back after talking about this a lot, amplifying it a lot. When, when I see that there are no women competing or lesser women competing for the NGE, my mind is racing like, wow. All over the country, you can see that a lot of men are using money to lure people to vote for this. Whereas women don't go to the next extent. As so many people we've spoken to, to have sort of given up on the system. But what do you sort of hope for that this country can achieve in the years to come? Generally, I think everyone, including women, want change. If people begin to think more innovatively, creatively, and build, build a change that they want to see in the community, that, that will really spark and inspire 
a young individual. The future is bright with uh, young people now finally aware. They hear all these promises, they're not seeing it. So all this anger will hopefully bring out something good, like someone has to do something about it. And if it's not now, when? If it's not me, who? Spending time with the Leping sisters has brought our nation's challenges and its hopes into sharp focus. They embody the youthful optimism that I see every day in Honiara and across our happy isles. But they also know all too well the barriers we face. So many people here are working hard to better not just themselves, but their communities and their country. What we need is for our leaders to do the same. <laughs>